Hello boys and girls. I hope you and your families have had a very good Lord's Day. And we're going to take a few minutes now with the pew packers. And let's start out by saying the books of the Bible. I hope you're really learning them. I say that every week. We'll find out soon, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right, let's get the new. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. We said 39 in the old, 27 in the new. So that's 66, 66, 66 books of the Bible. 39 old, 27 new, 66 books of the Bible. All right, let's sing the song about only a little boy David. Ready? Only a little boy David and only a babbling brook. Only a little boy David and five little stones he took. One little stone went into the sling and the sling went round and round. Round and round and round and round and round and round and round. One little stone went up, up, up and a giant came tumbling down. You remember who that giant was? Goliath. Old Goliath. You always want to be careful about the old devil. Ready? The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd lock him in a box. Lock him in a box and throw away the key for all the mean things he's done to me. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus more and more each day. Don't forget those two little magic words now. <coughs> Excuse me. There are two little magic words that will open any door with ease. One little word is thanks, and the other little word is please. You be sure to say thank you to your parents, to the other people that you see, and ask for something. Ask, may I have this please? May I do that please? That's really good manners. The good word for manners is etiquette. That's good etiquette. Talk to your parents about that. Now, let's have a story. I've got a story for you this evening, and this one is found in Mark 16, Luke 24, and Acts chapter 1. It is entitled, The Ascension. That's a big word, children. The word ascension is talking about something that ascends, that goes up. And what this is about is when Jesus Christ when he was on top of the mountain, he talked to his apostles and his followers. The Bible says he ascended. He went up into the clouds, and he's now sitting on a throne at the right hand of God. All right, here's what we read. Jesus and his friends were on a hillside outside of Jerusalem. The time had come for Jesus to leave the world. He's been crucified. He's been resurrected. And it's time for him to go back to heaven. In the time since his resurrection, he had made many things clearer to the apostles and had told them a little about what the future would hold, what's going to happen. Jesus turned to his disciples. He said, You must stay here in Jerusalem from now for now and wait for the gift that my Father has promised you. My Father is going to give you a gift. For soon you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then you must spread my message not only in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, but to every country. He held up his hands to bless them, and then before their very eyes, he was taken up to heaven. He ascended, he went up, and a cloud hid him from their sight. As they stood, the, the apostles stood there looking upwards, you know, can you imagine? Looking to see if they can still see Jesus. Suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. These are angels. They say, why are you standing here looking at the sky? 
Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but he will come back again in the same way that he left. Jesus is going to come back someday, and he's going to come back to get his children and take them to heaven. But ascension, I want you to remember that word. Now, what does the word ascension mean? It means to go up. And Jesus went up into the clouds. And where did he go? He went back to heaven. And what did he do when he got to heaven? He sat down on his throne on the right hand side of God. Now, let me ask you what was the uh, city that this took place next to? He was on a hillside, and the hillside was next to what city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That's a great, great story that we have so much faith in and so much confidence in. And Jesus has been resurrected. He's gone back to heaven. And at some time, he's going to come back for all of us. Now, let's sing another song, and then we'll do the five-finger prayer, and we'll close with a song. Let, let's sing the song about the devil being after us. Ready? One, two, three, the devil's after me. Four, five, six, he's always throwing bricks. Seven, eight, nine, he misses every time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm free. Nine, eight, seven, I'm on my way to heaven. Six, five, four, there's room for many more. Three, two, one, the devil's on the run. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm free. Now, let's talk about the five-finger prayer. Remember, you say in your prayers every day, you're talking to your Heavenly Father. You might have to get your folks to help you do that, but you don't forget now. When you say your prayers, you always want to pray for who? Those people that are closest to you, your family, your parents, your grandparents, those people that love you so much, that help take care of you, that give you the food to eat, clothes to wear, a place to live, that take care of you, those closest to you. Who else? Those in authority. We're supposed to pray for the rulers like the president, the governor. We pray for the fire chief, the police chief, people that have a great influence on our lives. Pray and ask God to bless them and direct them, give them wisdom that they make good decisions so that we can have a good life. And then we pray for who? The leaders, who do we say always are the leaders in the church? They're the elders. Who are our elders here at Amory? Well, they are Phil Sullivan, Jerry Cooper, and Tim Dickerson. We need to ask God to bless them, give them wisdom, and guide them as they try to shepherd the flock and make good decisions. And then we're to pray for those that are weak. We have some people that are weak. They're sick. And some people have had surgeries. They're trying to get well. Some people have had cancers, they have treatments. We need to pray for the sick. It could be somebody in your family, but if you don't know who the sick are and you want to pray for them, hopefully, ask your mother and daddy. They look in the bulletin and they can see from that who are the sick. And what's the last one? Pray for me. That's you, you, that God will help you to be a good boy, a good girl. He'll give you uh, wisdom, as you grow up, you'll be able to know what His will says, the Bible, because you've been listening to the Bible stories, and your mother and daddy been helping you. Pray for yourself. You pray for these great blessings, and ask God to continue to bless you, and thank Him for them. Thank Him for your food that you eat, always before you eat. When you go to bed at night, ask Him to watch over you and keep you safe. And when you get up the next day, ask Him to bless you and help you through the day. Pray for yourself. Do a good job on your prayers now. All right. Let's close this with singing this song. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. 
Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say, for the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. We always want to be careful that we only look at good things, listen to good things, we only say good things. Use our hands to do those things that are good, never to do anything bad or hurtful to anyone. And use our feet to go to places that are good, never to bad places. That pleases God, and one day we'll get to live with Him. You have a good week, be good boys and girls, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Over all the earth, you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Over every thought, over every word may my life reflect the beauty of my lord cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the lord of all i am so won't you reign in me Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? We're happy that you've joined us uh, this evening uh, for just a few minutes to uh, study God's Word together. I um, wanted to talk to you tonight uh, just a little bit um, about, uh, about how you're feeling. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people um, throughout uh, the past few months talk to me about how that, uh, their, their faith has been struggling or, or um, they've, they've worried about how um, how that they perhaps have a faith that that could be described a, as dead because uh, they're not getting the the nourishment to their faith that they want. They're not getting the encouragement. They're not fellowshipping together. They're not doing the things that 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 they want to do. And and uh, and these have been you know Christians from all over that that have talked with me about that and ministers who have shared their their uh, their their struggles with how do you how do you um, Minister, how do you evangelize? How do you preach? How do you give a congregation what they need uh, during a time where you know you can't really go visiting because you don't want to bring germs into someone's life? You can't really um, do the normal day-to-day -day stuff that you would do. Uh, you can't gather together. You can't fellowship. How, how does it work? You know, how can how can I say that I have a faith that is alive? How can I say that I have a faith that is active, that is working, that is you know that is, uh, or how can I maintain a faith like that um, if if I'm not uh, able to do the things that that uh, that I would normally do? as a Christian. And so tonight I want us to talk for just a few minutes about some things that Paul said in Colossians chapter 2 uh, and, and verses uh, 6 and 7 about being alive in Christ. First of all, I, I think that, that, uh, that it's important to notice as we're, uh, as we're reading together, uh, it's important for us to notice starting in verse 6, Paul says, uh, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk 
in Him. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Now, do you remember when you received Christ? Do you remember what it felt like when you, when you became a Christian, when you started your relationship with Jesus? Do you remember what it was like to, uh, to come up out of the water as a, a, having put to, to death the, the old man of sin and, and becoming a new creature? Do you remember what that was like? I remember uh, like it was yesterday. I was in a, a little town in South Carolina called Woodruff. And I was 13 years old, and, and uh, I'd been on a paper route with my dad. We delivered newspapers of about 1,300 of them on, uh, on Wednesday mornings um, to different apartment complexes. And uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was an odd job that he did, and, and he paid me a whole whopping salary of $20 a week uh, when I was 13 years old to do that. And I, and I remember feeling... Uh, feeling as if I understood some things that, that had never really clicked for me before when it came to sin and, and salvation and, and a relationship with God and Jesus. And, and, and so we talked about those things, and I made the decision that day to, to become a Christian. And I remember that, that the baptistry at the Woodruff Church of Christ where we were working as stateside missionaries was cold. It didn't have a heater. And, uh, and I remember uh, they filled it up. Um, for, for me, and, and, and at the beginning of those Wednesday night services, we started our services that night um, with my baptism. And I remember, uh, I remember going down in the water and, 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 and coming up and being absolutely freezing, but I never felt better. And I remember that, that from that day on, things were different for me. For, for a long time, I began participating in, in leadership, in worship, like I had never been able to do before. The, the, the Lord's Supper was, 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 was uh, you know, vibrant to me, and, and, and there was meaning there. And I, and I remembered thinking about Jesus and, and, and everything that he went through and everything that, that, that he was willing to do for me and being so thankful for that sacrifice. And, 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 and I remember... Uh, wanting to talk to my friends, the people that I knew that I could influence about Jesus and, and, about, uh, and about what it was like to, to have a relationship with him. And, and this was all at, you know, 13, 14 years old. And, and I remember what it was like to feel like I had received Christ and to feel, uh, to feel the joy that comes with receiving Christ and I felt alive. I felt excited. I felt new. I felt clean, cleansed, sanctified. I felt all of those things. And Paul says, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Feel that way all the time. As you received Jesus, as you received Christ, walk that way, be that way, remember what it was like. If, if for some reason you feel like your faith is struggling right now, you don't feel uh, as alive in Christ as you, as you have in the past, maybe, maybe it's time for you to revisit that feeling that you had on the very first day, the very first instant you, when you came up out of the water and your sins were washed away. And you began that relationship with Jesus. Think about that time. Think about where you were. Think about who was involved in your baptism. Think about the encouragement that you received from, from your brothers and sisters in Christ around you from that day moving forward. Remember that feeling. Let it reinvigorate that alive feeling that you have in Jesus. Let it reinvigorate that that, that hunger that you have for, for spreading his word. So Paul says, remember what it was like when you received Christ and walk that way. And then number two, he says, he says, so walk in him rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up in him. Well, what does that mean? Rooted. You know, uh, I... Uh, haven't thrown out something yet that, that I probably should have thrown out weeks ago, 
but thanks to COVID, uh, it's still in my house and it even still has some lights on it. Um, there is still a Christmas tree sitting in the corner of my house and, uh, and believe it or not, um, we've kept it, you know, we've kept it going with water in the, in the bucket that it's been uh, sitting in and, and, uh, and it's been disconnected from its root system for a long time. And, and as I looked at that tree um, just recently, I, I, I started thinking about this verse and, and how Paul says to, to be rooted and built up in Christ. And I started thinking about Christians who, who have stepped away from their root system for whatever reason, whether it's because of the pandemic or whether it's because of, of, uh, of uh, bad experiences that, 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 that they've had um, being among God's people or, or um, I've, seen, I've seen lots of people who, who accuse God's people of hypocrisy or they accuse God's people of of, uh, of, of not being real, of not being genuine. And, and, and my heart breaks for people who have had experiences like that. And it's led them to, to step away from their root system. You know, I can, I can keep that tree with, with water. I can keep that tree looking okay for a little while, but if I look down at the bottom uh, of the tree, I can keep it looking green for a little while, but if I look down at the bottom, you know, it started to lose some of the needles. Uh, I, can, I can see where those things have fallen off and they're starting to litter my carpet a little bit. You know what message that tree is sending to me? It's saying I'm dead. I've lost my root system. I can't grow anymore. And just like, you know, just like that tree, when the Christian steps away from, from being rooted in Christ, when, when, when we step away from, from, from being where we're supposed to be, from being with God's people, from fellowshipping, from, from being together, from spending time in, in God's Word, when we, when we step away from, from those things... We're dead. We're not going to grow anymore. We can't be built up together because we've, we've stepped away from our root system. So Paul says, first, remember what it was like to receive Christ. Remember what it was like to, to feel this excitement about, about wearing the name of Jesus and then stay there, walk that way, be rooted there, and be built up through that relationship with Jesus. He says, he says, be rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Be established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving, number three. You know, it's, it's not enough for me to, or, or I feel as if it's not enough for me to remember Jesus and remember what it felt like uh, to, to have, a, you know, to, to, to start a relationship with him and to be excited about that relationship. It's not enough for me, to, for me to revisit my root system and make sure that my feet are firmly planted where they should be so that I can grow in the way that, that God would have me to be, revisiting his word, renewing my faith from day to day, but even in, in, in times that are uncertain, even in the midst of times that, we, that, we're, you know, that we're not functioning in the way that, that as Christians we're used to, to, uh, to functioning, we're not uh, meeting, we're not, we're not fellowshipping, we're not encouraging, we're not edifying, we're not building each other up in the way that we would like to be. Even in those times where things may seem bleak or, or dim or, or, or frustrating. I think it's so important for us to remember that our lives are to be abounding 
in thanksgiving. You know, even, even in the midst of a pandemic, there's so much for me to be thankful for. You know, I've, I've had the virus. I'm so thankful that, that, that the case for me and for my wife and for our girls was so mild. I'm so thankful that, that, uh, that I had uh, a good physician like, like Dr. McComb to, to steer me in the right direction as to, as to, how, to, uh, as to how to handle these things and, and how to handle the, uh, the, the at-home treatment um, of this virus. I'm so thankful that I live in a country like America where, where there was where there was medical care readily available for me. All I had to do was, was drive and wait in a parking lot uh, to, to get the, the help and the, and the care that I needed. I'm so thankful that, that, that even in, in the midst of, 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 a, of a struggling economy, uh, that, 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 that our lives as... as uh, uh, as Americans, at least, at least in my circle, have been have been relatively unaffected by by the the, the economy and the job losses that, that we've seen happen, and and I'm I'm thankful that, that I get to serve in a way that that um, that still allows me to put food on the table for my family. There's just so much for Christians to be thankful for. There's so much for for, for God's people to be thankful for in a time like this. Pretty soon, I'm, I'm hoping that, that we're going to be able to, to abound in thanksgiving for the opportunity to come back together, for the opportunity to be built up, to be, to be edified, to be encouraged. Uh, I know that, that, that caution is going to be something that we're going to have to exercise, but, but I'm hopeful and, and, uh, and, and I'm excited about the potential as we see more and more people um, uh, becoming uh, vaccinated and, and as we see more and more people um, striving to get towards herd immunity, which is what we've been striving for this whole time. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that God's people are going to get to come back together and be encouraged. I'm also hopeful that this time has taught us the value of Christianity outside the building, the value of God's people outside of, of, uh, of these four walls. You see, if anything, this should have taught us that, that being alive in Christ being alive in Christ is, is something that happens individually. It's something that happens in my life, and it's something that I am fully responsible for in my relationship with God, in my relationship with Him through Christ. Are you alive in Christ tonight as you, as you look at your life and as you, uh, as you examine your own relationship with God? Can I, can, can I honestly say that my relationship with God is where it needs to be? Can I honestly say that, that, that looking at my life tonight, my faith is strong, it's, it's well established, I'm, I'm rooted and, 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 uh, and, and built up in the way that, that, that God would have me to be in Christ. And I'm just as excited now about my relationship with Jesus as I was the day that it began. If not, then maybe there are some things that I need to make right. Whether that means that, yes, I need to start a relationship with God or, or, or perhaps, uh, perhaps that's happened and it's time for me to renew the things that, that I need to make right. It's time for me to... to to, uh, to re-examine my faith and to, and to do what is necessary, studying and, and praying and, and encouraging those things that I need to do to bolster my faith individually. 
I hope that, that if you're looking at your life and you find yourself lacking in those areas tonight, that, that you'll do what is necessary. Philip and I would love to, to talk with, with anyone about their relationship with God to, to make sure that, that we're doing everything we can to help your relationship and to help our relationship with God be better. I hope that, that you'll take that opportunity and, and that you'll take uh, the things that we've studied tonight and, and make application in your own lives. We're so thankful for, for, uh, for the time that, that you've uh, spent with us tonight. And, uh, and I hope that, uh, that as we bring things to a close now that, that everyone can take a look in the mirror and say, yes, I'm alive in Christ. Yes, my relationship with God is where it needs to be. Let's bow together. Father, we're so thankful for, for you, for your son, for your church, for your word that, that gives us uh, hope and that gives us strength and that gives us uh, encouragement every time we, we open its pages. Father, we pray that you'll help us to take the things that we've studied tonight, to apply them to our lives and to, um, and to be better tomorrow than we were today. We're so thankful for all the ways that you bless us. And we're thankful most of all for Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.